It's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. Just going for a run, climbing down Squaw Peak Mountain over there. A little out of breath, but I was making the descent down the mountain. Boom! I got hit by this thing, and I'm like, hey, this is a mango flower. Why am I getting hit in the face with mango flowers? And then I came down this street, you guys can see right here, and I saw this house with these beautiful roses in front. And look behind the house right there, and you'll see towering behind the house, above the house, are two palm trees. And below those palm trees are all those trees in a row. Those are mango trees. Those are avocado trees. Banana palm. Magnolia. I gotta meet the person who lives at this house. I gotta meet him. You guys wanna come? Come with me. Let's go together. Let's go. Hey, excuse me. I have a question about your mango trees. Hey! Shameless O'Leary. <laughs> is this your house? No. What are you doing here? Every time I find mango trees, Shameless O'Leary is just hanging out under the mango trees. I'm recovering from bee sting. Oh, I saw that. Enjoying the smell of the roses today and gazing at this beautiful 13-year-old avocado tree. If folks follow you on Instagram and follow me on Instagram, you'll see pictures of what your face looked like after the bee sting. You're right. This avocado tree in the front yard is impressive. Anybody in town would be happy to have this guy. Yep. And we both found out that this avocado tree was grown from a seed. Right. So the woman, let's call her the mango lady, who owns this mango house, she told me she planted that seed when her granddaughter was three years old. Correct. And they love the taste of the avocado. She has no idea what variety it is. She just says, be good to the seed. Right. And it's grown as a seedling into this tree. Yeah. And uh, she says it's about 13 or so 13 years, years old. 13 years old. The cool thing about this tree and with all of her other trees, she's never given any protection to them. Yeah. So it's In grown. terms of shade protection. Correct. Or frost protection. Right. They just make it. Yep. Now, what do you think the secret is to them making it? Water and good soil. She mm -hmm. composts heavily. Right. So she's always adding nutrients to the soil nonstop throughout the year. Yeah. She's also never letting the trees dry out. Okay. They're fed, they're watered. They do have the protection of the house here. Right. Getting a little bit of protection in the winter and from the like summer. Like wind protection, Correct. sun protection, cold protection. Right. All that stuff. She's created a really nice microclimate here to grow all these cool plants with the density of foliage and the shade and mm -hmm. what have you. I know everybody watching really wants to see the mangoes that she's growing. But before we show them, I mean, this avocado is very impressive and it's in flower. And it produced fruit last year, she said. Right. And so she's getting it to fruit just fine. Oh, yeah. She has a hedge of oranges over here, which is pretty impressive, on her perfectly manicured lawn that are like one foot apart planted and fruiting like crazy as a privacy hedge. And she has it set up so that her water system can go down the trench that's here and flow almost around her entire property. It's gravity fed. Gravity so fed. The water comes on at the top, works its way down. So Amazing. she's replicating flood irrigation, right. but using tap water. Yes. Amazing stuff. Right. So let's go see these mangoes and we'll tell everybody the story of the mango trees. We'll tell you guys why they're successful in the Phoenix area. And uh, there's one practical reason and one little more existential reason. Right. Okay, we'll go check it out. Before we get started and go into the backyard, I want everybody to please hit the like button. We try to bring you guys incredible videos that are locally uh, produced here in town. So hit the like button, it helps us out a lot. Subscribe, uh, put a comment or a question or a compliment down below in the comments and check out Seamus and I on Instagram and Facebook. We're on both of those mediums. My Urban Gardening Facebook group is good and so is the Seamus O'Leary Tropical Fruit Trees Facebook page. So as we walk into the backyard, she has a beautiful apricot here also grown from seed. Right. Yeah, she actually all of her trees are grown from seed. Yes. And they are producing. And right now she's got, you can see over this way, a plethora, a gaggle, of apricot up at the top there. And she has the same situation that I have where the apricots ripen and then in a few days it's over. Correct. So it's a quick ripening, you gotta do something with them right yeah, away. Definitely wanna pay attention. And this one looks beautiful and grown from seed. I mean, it's so cool. And I was asking her if that's necessary. She said she doesn't really believe that the seed is necessary or the plants. She goes, just take care of the plants and they'll do just fine. Whether they're a cutting, a graft, or a seed. Correct. Yeah. Definitely. She's a patient woman. She is. To wait for these guys to grow from seed. We're walking past the key lime tree, which is a little past its season for fruiting, but it still has a couple of fruits on it. And uh, a pomegranate tree that's been cut and pruned in a way to raise the canopy up. 
So instead of looking like a bush, like most pomegranates do, this one looks like an actual tree. Like a tunnel. Like a tunnel. Really amazing stuff. Some beautiful pomegranate flowers. It's the perfect time of year for the pomegranate flowers. Come on in the gate here, and before you guys come too far, above me and Seamus, look at this view, okay? The sun is glistening off these leaves. There's a palm tree way up top, and on the path toward the palm tree is just a plethora, I would call it a plethora, of mango flowers. They are loaded with fruits. They're really beautiful. The leaves look beautiful. Right. Which means the tree's healthy. Correct. And the flowers look like they're in full production mode and they're littered with bees. I mean, hit the like button because I, I wish I had a button to hit like on right now. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. An amazing scene. Strong smell too. Mango flowers have a distinct smell that... They do. It hits you. You know, it reminds you of Kauai. Yeah. When you walk back here. I just thought that was an incredible view of the success that this woman's having growing mango trees here in the Phoenix area at the base of Piastua Peak Mountain. As we walk inside a little bit deeper, you'll notice that there's a lot of permaculture and a lot of companion planting going on. Uh, she has trees that have friends and even their friends have friends, you know what I mean? So deep within, there's a beautiful avocado tree right here that's also in flower with beautiful leaves growing huge. Look at the size of the avocado tree going up. And then to the left of the avocado tree is the mango tree over here, growing up even taller than the avocado tree. So it looks like the mangoes are way larger than the avocados in her yard. Right. The mangoes definitely have given protection to the avocados to mm. allow them to get started. Right. So that's why they're able to thrive here because the density of the foliage. Well, let's go check out the original mango tree, the mother tree, and tell you the story of why she's successfully growing mangoes and why she's growing mangoes at all. Definitely. So, Mr. Seamus, it looks like you are standing next to two trees. And if we're looking at the trunks, hard to tell them apart, but you can tell by the leaves. Correct. Okay, so what are the two trees? The one on the right is a mango. Okay. And this is actually the original mango tree on the property. This one right here? Yes. This one here is about 23, 24 years old. Wow. Yeah. She said 91 is when they planted the seed. Correct. And the we can both tell the story. Her mother loved mangoes. Right. And right before her mother passed away, they ate a mango together. Her mother loved it. Her mom picked the spot. It goes in the yard. They planted the seed. She passed away and now the mango is kind of the time capsule and the ability to talk to her mom through the mango tree. Correct. Right, that's a pretty awesome story. Yeah, so that's, this is the heartbeat of the yard right here. That's great. That's so maybe the, there is some sort of a spirit oh, definitely. in the tree yeah. that's helping this area thrive with mangoes. Definitely. In addition to the fact that she tills in homegrown compost right. four times a year or so. And she makes sure to keep them hydrated. Hydrated, yeah. So see her, her trench, she has the ability to, to transport water along this trench. Right. But she doesn't use a lot of mulch. No. But she does till in a lot of compost. Correct. Right. One thing you'll notice as well is the proximity to the wall. Yeah. Many people are afraid to plant close to walls mm -hmm. out of fear that the wall is either going to hurt the tree or the tree is going to hurt the wall. Yeah. Here is living proof. You can have 50 foot trees, 50 of them. Yeah inches off of the wall and the wall has not been compromised at all. This looks like a pretty typical Phoenix area wall that the trash alley behind it. Yeah, six foot block wall. Six foot block wall. And yeah. the tree's not knocking it over. Not bothering at all. They grow around it. And it probably gave the young tree some protection from hot wind and monsoons and uh, intense sun on the trunk. Definitely. Now this yard faces west. So that's west. Correct. So in the summer, this area is in shade. So those trees were allowed to get started for a year or two before they ever had to deal with direct mm -hmm. western June, July, August Phoenix sun. Sure. Also in the winter, this acts as a little bit of a heat barrier. Like that five degrees is very important Correct. in the Phoenix area. Yeah, so this yeah. keeps the cold wind from knocking out the trees. And uh, that's how it works. And this tree next to it is very close together. Right. So they've been kind of growing together for the most part. Yeah, they're three foot apart. Exactly, and this is a magnolia tree. Right. Uh, and it produces those quintessential magnolia flowers. Beautiful flowers. Yeah. And this is how I recommend actually planting. This is what I try to do in my yard. Put the trees on top of each other, because that's how they grow in nature. Exactly. You know, this business about, well, you have to have 20 foot between the trees. Yeah. Obviously not. 
my, uh, my vegan athlete YouTube channel is getting a lot of trolls in the comments lately from people. The comment I'm getting most often is, Jake, your trees are way too close together. You still have a lot of room in here. You I could know. actually plant in between those existing trees. The president of the rare fruit growers, uh, Doug Jones, came over to my house and said, um, hey, there's more room to plant trees. And Pam was like, well, those are our open areas. And then an hour after he left, he texted me and said, convince your wife to give you those open areas. That's why you have a park <laughs> up the street. That's right. Yeah. So this magnolia tree was also one of the favorites of her mother yeah. and her. So it's kind of like these trees have a symbiotic relationship together, right. sentimentally and just with permaculture. They're giving each other shade, wind protection, all that jazz. You can feel it back here. Yeah. You can feel there's something going on totally. other than just plants in the ground. Right. And the ground is spongy. Right. And uh, what we asked her was, uh, what's the secret? And she thought that, you know, um, her mom being like the kind of the angel over this garden is one of the secrets, as well as tilling in. She tills in compost mm -hmm. seasonally right. during the seasons, uh, tills it in a few inches into the soil. And she was saying that um, she doesn't really care about the water bill because the water bill to her is a worthy expense that's better than a psychiatrist. Correct. So instead of going to talk about your problems with some person in an office, she talks to the trees with the water bill. Sure. So I think it's a great way to think about life. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Look at the big picture. Right. Don't worry about the small stuff. All of us are trying to make it in life and we forget that uh, we don't need drugs or a psychologist, psychiatrist. We need trees. We need more plants. And some good food. She gets to eat the mangoes. Oh, yeah. And uh, talk to the trees. So. so water is key, compost key, being in a pleasant, attitude when you plant the trees, all that stuff. Microclimate, Microclimate, food, water. If we take them further, there's more than just this mango tree. There is more. So there's a lot more. We're going to end the video here in a couple seconds, but let me show you guys the rest of these mango trees over here. As we walk down the road, she's got a bunch of banana trees that are actually plantains. Right. So we can click on the screen right now or in the comments or the description to click on the video that we did about these plantains. They look pretty amazing. And I mean, coming out of the winter, these look like there's no freeze damage because of the... The canopy of the, ma the mangoes and the avocado protect this. That's amazing. So it keeps the yard a little warmer. That's awesome. And more mangoes up here. You can see the size of these trees. The size I mean, they're massive. is huge. You don't like, see this in the continental United States. In Phoenix. In Phoenix, California. Right. Anywhere, except, you know, South Florida. How tall do you say these mango trees are? Oh, these trees are at least 40 foot tall. Yeah. At minimum. And they're not just impressive trees. They produce a whole lot of fruit. A lot of fruit. To where she's giving it to Mexican food restaurants. Right. She's giving it to local ice cream parlors. Yep. She's giving the mangoes to these people. Right. Because she has too many. Yeah. And she's even composting the mangoes. Yes. Because she has too many. Right. Back into soil for the mangoes. That's amazing. So this one in particular looks great. Got an excellent uh, trunk system. And the other thing people gotta remember is that these trees are all planted from seed. They're all seeds. So not only did she plant the original mango with her mom, of the mango that her mom loved, in the spot her mom picked, but the, all these trees are seeds. Propagated from that original tree. From that mother tree. So they're all related. So they're all locally produced here on this property. A little bit of inbreeding going on back here. Yeah, totally. It's okay. If you take a shot looking up, you can really see the scope, the size of these trees. Like this is a, this is a good example, a good visual here of what we're witnessing in person. It is a true jungle. It's not a mango tree in the backyard. It is, it's a mango jungle. A little mango oasis. Right. To where she actually has to trim the mangoes back for the trash man in the trash right. alley because he's complaining about the There's mango trees much mango being tree. in the way. It is a problem, <laughs> yes, for the city of Phoenix. Some really impressive mango trees that are look small only because they're set against these enormous ones. Right. In anybody else's yard, this would be an impressive mango tree. And uh, she's got a lot of avocados mixed in, so come on back to this way and I'll show you guys uh, the end of the property. And if we turn around and look back this direction, you can see a really nice shot of all the mango flowers. We're here at the corner of the property and this is a great view in the full sun of the mango in full bloom. 
People have gotten their mangoes to flower that I've seen, but she's got a full mature tree to flower. And you can see how not every flower becomes a mango, only one every about inch or two inches. And that way the tree is properly thinned out. Mother Earth is thinning it out for it. And this guy is just full of mangoes that will grow into fruits in about three months or so. So as we pan from the fruiting mango over, you can see how the mango over here is all these red leaves. That's all the young, beautiful new growth. And then as you pan up, you can see how there's new growth everywhere amongst the flowers. And then as you guys go farther back and pan up even higher, there's an avocado tree that's 40 plus feet tall, towering over the mango trees. And I think that uh, Mr. Seamus O'Leary is in love and he can stay here all day and just watch those trees blow in the wind, right? It's actually bringing me to tears. I'm <laughs> fighting it, <laughs> fighting it, really. I mean, look at the, the magnitude of that tree, the size of it, the health of it. Yeah. There's no burn on the leaves, the gorgeous new growth. And we're just coming out of winter time. Yeah. So she said that the avocados, winter is never an issue. No. But for the mango, winter is an issue. It's opposite. Opposites. Yeah. But the mangoes can take the summer. Correct. Where the avocado needs a little bit of help. Right. And that's, the mangoes have provided a shelter for that avocado yeah. tree to thrive. Exactly. Pretty awesome. It looks like one tree, but there's really half a dozen trees in here making up this huge entire cluster. Oh yeah. Just on this end of the yard. Yeah. Pretty amazing. And if we uh, turn over here, the very corner of the yard, you wouldn't uh, be surprised, there's another mango. And going up by himself, towering again. I mean, I'm, I'm six foot one, eight foot tall reach. That's a 30 foot plus tall tree. Here, she actually has more mango trees than weeds. Than weeds. Literally. Yeah. Every corner of the property, mangoes popping up. She has more full mature mango trees than most gardeners have of mangoes. Or most gardeners have ever seen in their lifetime. In their lifetime. Right. Right. Pretty impressive. So it looks like uh, eventually folks can be assured that in the Phoenix area, a mango tree can be a full shade tree. Right. Provide incredible shade. Right. Um, as much uh, as a huge moringa, as much as a huge mulberry, as much as a huge ash tree. Correct. Mangoes can be that kind of big shade tree yep. and provide fruit at the same time. And the proof is here mm -hmm. that as they age, they become cold hardier. Right. Obviously, they wouldn't live this long, and we get nasty winters about every three or four years. Because I know I was in 26 degrees at least for three nights this right. last winter, and I'm only 10 minutes from here, mm -hmm. and these mangoes are not damaged at all. Right. Look at that. That yeah. leaf shows no winter damage, and it's about March 20th today or so. Pretty amazing. So the moral to that story is protect your trees when they're young. Give them the right microclimate, feed and water them, mm -hmm. and they will acclimate to our climate. Exactly. I mentioned to her she could actually plant more mangoes on this part of the wall. She goes, no, that would be too much. Oh, sure. <laughs> so amazing. Some good tips, everybody. Protect the trees when they're young. Give them a good microclimate. Let them grow big. Uh, plenty of water. It's cheaper than a, um, uh, a head doctor. Right. And. Uh, till in some compost, which is food for the trees. Right. That's really important. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing me these amazing trees. It's always a treat uh, going Thank on you. your gardening adventures because we see things we wouldn't have seen otherwise. And I am hope that you guys enjoy that me and Seamus bring you guys these uh, great videos showing you some of the gardening gems of the master gardeners who have green thumbs and who are really growing their own food at home. You guys can check us both out on Facebook, the Seamus O'Leary Facebook, my Urban Gardening Facebook, and Instagram this guy at Seamus underscore O'Leary underscore, and me at Jake Mace Tai Chi. I'll see you guys back here next time.